Another important abstract at ASH 2023 was a, f- a final report from a combination approach that was taken. So Seminib as a stamp inhibitor it has a novel mechanism of action. It binds the mirror stool pocket or corrects the mirror stool pocket defect that happens with b fusion. So ATP competitive inhibitors, drugs like Dilanib, Amanib, and Desanib can be used in combination in a rational um, approach for CML. So early on in the phase one trial called the 2101 study, we entered patients into combination arms. They were receiving variable doses of Asimunib and the standard doses of the ATP competitive inhibitors, Amandib, Nalanib, and Desantinib. And Jorge Cortez, uh, an esteemed friend and colleague, presented this data at ASH. And as we looked at the long-term follow-up of these patients, we we understood more about the combination. Remember, these patients weren't res- were, were, were not necessarily sensitive to their prior ATP competitive inhibitor um, any longer in all cases. They couldn't be intolerant because that wouldn't be reasonable, but the exposure to these drugs already was the majority of patients that had had an ATP competitive inhibitor, and we now are going ahead and adding a seminib. So different different uh, dose levels were entered, and uh, again, standard doses of nilotinib 300 twice daily, amantinib 400 daily, and desantinib 100 milligram daily were combined with the lower dose range of aseminib, which we had studied in phase one. Anywhere from 20 to 40 milligrams twice a day up to 160 milligrams once daily um, in, in, in the desantinib arm. Most importantly, we needed to understand how these drugs combined. And um, what we learned was the exposure to um, the HB competitive inhibitors um, was affected um, and vice versa that aseminib concentrations may be affected. So the combination doses of aseminib and nilotinib and aseminib and amantinib need to be um, modif- modified or lower, whereas the drug-drug interaction between aseminib and desantinib was less. So it allowed us to expand the dose of aseminib greater. I think that was really an advantage. So. Um, when we looked at adverse events, of course, there were adverse events which you might have attributed to the TKIs themselves. And, and, and I, I say that meaning the ATP competitive TKIs. For example, in nilotinib, abdominal pain and lipase elevation were fairly common. Um, nausea and diarrhea with amantinib and fatigue and thrombocytopenia with cisantinib. And I think those are the things you might expect to see with those ATP competitive inhibitors. We didn't really see a significant challenge when we added aseminib. There were... Um, some more adverse events. Um, adverse events of special interest were were not particularly uh, increased, and efficacy was seen in all three arms. There was definitely responses across the different uh, subsets. Um, probably uh, some of the more favorable responses with the disim- the desantinib combination, um, but the rates of MMR across um, uh, the the arms was was quite good, um, with a m- median of twenty weeks or so to uh, improve responses in these combination therapies. And we concluded that um, we now know how to combine these drugs. We have the 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 doses um, of um, of the different. ATP competitive inhibitors at the, in this study fixed, and we understood again that the exposure to aseminib was was altered by adding, um, the, having the combination, and and that with the sand um, that that effect was minimal to none, but with the nolanib and amanib it was it was significant to the point where the doses of aseminib need to be lower. Now this approach has been inverted in many people's minds and that maybe we should be thinking about using higher doses of aseminib and smaller doses of the HP competitive inhibitors and that's in, in development next. Another important study to mention was the the last follow-up from the, the phase one study, which was presented by Andreas Kochaus on behalf of the, the study team. So again, this was really just our final report of the primary study, which included previously published data on aseminib monotherapy and the population I just shared with you, which is the combination study. And and in a quick summary, that study showed that there were no new safety um, concerns as we followed patients up to eight years of follow-up, that responses um, in both the once daily and twice daily dosing schedules of aseminib were, were similar, and it was reasonable to be studying both uh, schedules um, over longer periods of time and that aseminib really uh, has found its place as a novel therapy and really an advance for for CML. One additional study which really cannot be omitted is a study not from the primary aseminib global study team, but actually from our colleagues in Australia, from the Australian Leukemia Group, presented by David Young. And this was the ASCEND trial, which was our first look at frontline therapy with aseminib 
in chronic face CML. And this um, study now with longer follow-up is showing us how in roughly uh, 80 or 100 patients, so actually 100 patients, we had um, the uh, early look at the rates of major molecular response and deeper molecular response and adverse events. And suffice it to say that um, early molecular response rates were very high and probably amongst the highest. Although again, we know that many of our other approaches and David showed that in Australia, you know, studies of desantinib um, with optimization and nilotinib combinations, et cetera, and, and, in, and even high dose amandib in the tidal trials, r responses were high. But more importantly, he showed that at early time points, um, major molecular response and deep molecular response were being achieved at much faster in a greater proportion of patients. And lastly, adverse events were really um, not uh, a concern. I think we were seeing some of the things we might expect with the seminib, such as myelosuppression and, and lipase elevation, which I think we need to separate from pancreatitis necessarily, but uh, in this study was considered you know, a potential um, concern and was dose limiting. But Overall, the adverse event signal, which we needed to see in a frontline study from Aseminib is incredibly encouraging, and the responses are even more encouraging. So I think the story with Aseminib is really coming around, and several presentations at ASH really helped solidify this, including long-term follow-up from Assemble, long-term follow-up from the phase one, more information on combination studies, and again, our first look at frontline Aseminib.